Hello my fellow comic book collectors, it's Alan the Comic Collector Geek and this is the Q&A video where I answer your questions. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Phil Camacho and um, he asked, in the previous video you showed major keys of first appearances of popular anthropomorphic uh, characters and cartoon characters. Uh, for example, Bugs Bunny, Richie Rich, etc. Are you still hunting? hunting for even rarer expensive comics of these animals or cartoons um please describe if any if there are still any like fantastic uh <laughs> fantastic four, uh four color number 16 for example okay so four color 16 is actually on my want list uh that's the first appearance in comics of mickey mouse and it's one that i'm looking for still don't have <laughs> i came close to getting it once uh but um yeah it's a hard book to find um there are a bunch that i'm still looking for uh the first is uh walt disney comics and stories number eight which is the first uh cover appearance of clara the cow <laughs> um i'm also looking for uh terry tunes number 50 which is the first appearance of heckle and jekyll and I'm looking for uh, a modern book, uh, which is Thorn, the Tales from the Lantern, which, number one, which is the first appearance of Bone. And I'm looking for uh, the Funnies, number 61, which is the first appearance of Andy Pandy. As well, I'm looking for uh, Vuti, <laughs> number uh, Vuti from 1978 which is the first appearance of Omaha the Dancer, which is kind of an adult character. But those are all the ones that I'm currently looking for. So there's actually a bunch that I'm looking for. Um, there's even others that are on my want list, um, which, you know, I'm still hunting. But I'm gonna show you some uh, ones that I didn't necessarily show recently. So I'm gonna sh show you some cool first appearances uh, from you know, cartoon characters. So one is um, Mighty Mouse. This is uh, Terry Toons number 38, uh, which is the first appearance of Mighty Mouse, and he's right there on the cover. So Mighty Mouse, I like showing that book. <laughs> um, and then I did, sh you did mention Richie Rich, so I figured, hey, why not show Richie Rich again? This is the first um, cover appearance uh, not cover appearance, first <laughs> appearance of Richie Rich in comics. He didn't make it on the cover though. This is Little Dot number one. So I'm actually looking for Richie Rich's first cover appearance, which is in um, Little Dot number six. And then we got Winnie the Pooh. This is the first appearance of Winnie the Pooh and the characters related to Winnie the Pooh. Like Eeyore, Eeyore and Piglet and Kangaroo. <laughs> okay. Uh, so there, Winnie the Pooh number one. And I figure I should show some bigger ones. We got first appearance of Yasagi Ojimbo in Albedo number two. So this is my copy of Albedo number two. It has a lot of spine text, that's why I got. A 7.5. <laughs> this black cover is brutal. But uh, yeah. And then I have Casper number one, the first appearance of Casper the Ghost. So just a few I just wanted to show off. Uh, yeah, show you some characters, cool cartoon characters, and some anthropomorphic characters as well. Um, actually, Friday's video from last week, when you're watching this, uh, will be all anthropomorphic uh, characters. So that should be a fun one to watch. And I, I show a lot of first appearances in that uh, video. So def definitely, if you haven't watched it already, check out Friday's video from last week. Okay, uh, next question is, um, uh, do, 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 do. do you have any first appearances of non-modern Japanese manga or anime characters. Uh, I actually have um, um, Astro Boy number one, like his first appearance, but I can't find it. I, I have no idea where I put it. It's in. I know it's mixed in with some other box. <laughs> I'm trying to find it, it's driving me nuts. Um, actually, I think I might know where it is, to tell you the truth, and now that I think about it more. 
Um, but yeah, so that one I do have. That's kind of like a 60s uh, uh, manga character. Um, but I'm going to show some others that I do have. I mentioned Astro Boy, but uh, this is the first appearance of Astro Girl. So that's her right there. And this is not modern. This is Star Blazers. And I actually have other books from the Star Blazers. I wasn't sure if it's zero or number one that's the first appearance. I think it's number one, actually. Uh, they always make it confusing. But this is Star Blazers, first appearance of Star Blazers. Either this one or the number one issue. And then we got Shogun Warriors. So this is, uh, you know, this is from the early 80s, I believe. Um, or 1978, actually. Shogun Warriors first appearance and this is the first English uh, like a, you know the uh, first English appearance of Macross this is Macross number one Let's see all these kind of Gundam ones and then this is a bit of a more modern book but it's still you know kind of a cool first appearance this is Alita Battle Angel and I actually have other um, ones like I showed Akira in a previous video and I actually have Sailor Moon's first appearance in America which is in Minx comics yeah so <laughs> uh, that's her first appearance in a uh, English uh, like our, our US comic I should say um, Sailor Moon's first appearance in a foreign book is uh, manga zine uh, or actually so Minx number, I think it's Minx number one, is the first appearance of um, Sailor Moon in a comic size uh, US book. Um, Manga Zine 21 is her first appearance, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, and the next part of the question was uh, which popular manga characters would you advise someone to start collecting? So, there's a bunch of like one of the best ways to figure out what to collect in terms of manga or uh, in terms of uh, popular characters are ones that appear on Netflix um, because what you're going to have is you're going to have it being at popular enough that they decide to bring it to Netflix and you're going to have an audience that gets built in North America that will uh, also start collecting those books. So you'll have a market in Japan and in uh, North America for those uh, anime. And anime anime is really a worldwide phenomenon right now. Um, but the ones that I'd recommend would be like Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> uh, who made his first appearance in Weekly Jump 838 uh, from December of 1984. Um, and that's an expensive book. <laughs> Like, very expensive book. Uh, but you can get the sort of next best thing, which is um, Dragon Ball 1, which usually goes for about two, $300. Um, another character that I'd recommend is Naruto, uh, who appeared in Weekly Jump um, number 43 from September of 1999. Um, then we got another major one, which would be One Piece. Uh, w who made their first appearance in um, Weekly Jump 34 from July of 1997. And then one that I really like, a series that's just really phenomenal, uh, is Death Note. And they appeared, uh, Death Note and like Light and all those characters related to Death Note, appeared in Weekly Shogun Sh Jump number one from 2004. You'll notice that the numbers of uh, the weekly jumps <laughs> are all over the place because it's a weekly magazine and they'll they just do multiple volumes. So um, yeah, I'm not sure what volume number that corresponds to, but it's number one of 2004. Uh, another major series that a lot of people really like, my daughter really loves this series, is uh, My Hero Academia, uh, Academia, uh, and that was. The characters from that first appeared in Weekly Jump number 32 from July of 2014. And then we got uh, another series that I just recently started binge watching was uh, Black Clover. And 
It uh, first appeared in uh, Weekly Shogun Jump number 12 from February of 2015. So just a bunch of really great uh, books uh, that I'd recommend. So Sailor Moon, uh, which is Magazine 21, uh, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Naruto, One Piece, Death Note, My Hero Academia, and um, Black Clover. Getting that Minx, like it's Mix or Minx, um, Magazine number one, uh, actually has a bunch of key appearances in it. It also has... Um, uh, it has Sailor Moon, it also has, um, what's it called, uh, Parasite, and I think, um, oh, I forgot what the other one is, it's not, uh, there's another character that makes their first appearance in it. Another one that you might want to consider is, um, One Piece, uh, not One Piece, One Punch Man is another, uh, title that is very popular, so, and I think he just appeared in One Punch Man, number one, um, and it's kind of a multi it's a like kind of a split comic as well so that's kind of an interesting one okay so those are <laughs> those are the anime i'd recommend um so uh the next is from avra uh avra uh golando i totally brutalized your name i'm so sorry um can you recommend top 10 pulp series with great covers and that are a good investment okay so i'm going to recommend a bunch and um here's the ones that i'm going to recommend and i'm going to show you some examples i don't have that many pulps but um i'm going to try to show you some examples of what you kind of might expect in these titles because i do have some i i have a little bit to show um so the first one would be weird tales um if you're going to buy the weird tales though um it's the Brundage, uh, Brundage covers that you want to look for. Uh, it's Margaret, Margaret Brundage. Um, and basically, uh, she's basically a really great artist. She's mainly known for one particular cover, which is, uh, the bat woman cover and where it's this woman with this sort of bat mask on her head. Um, but I'll show you some of my, uh, weird, weird tales. Um, they're not necessarily super valuable ones, but the series itself has a lot of really great covers. And if you look for her covers, um, they go for pretty good money. Um, and they have, you know, great potential investment thing. Uh, so here's Weird Tales. Here's an example. I'm going to show you just a few examples of Weird Tales. These are, these are non-valuable ones, maybe like that 20 to $30 range. If they're, it, you know, um, with uh, pulps, the condition really matters. So the, the cover really needs to be solid. Uh, so it chips like out of the, like see how there's a chip out of this one. Um, another thing to look at is the spine. Often, um, so this one looks like they, I think they've taped it. A lot of the time they'll tape the spine just to kind of keep it together. Cause the spines, it's square bound books. So they'll split. So often you'll see them split. For example, I'll show you this one. This one's pretty solid, for example. And you'll especially notice it on the corners where little chunks will be missing from the spine. Those are kind of things to look out for. Uh, you'll see this one is a little bit more rough. See how, how the, all the spine comes off. And that's something to watch out for with, um, with uh, the pulps. Okay, so that's one series. Another one that I would recommend is Spicy Detective, or anything spicy. Uh, and I'll show you a couple examples <laughs> of spicy ones. Um, so this is Spicy Stories. So this is uh, this is just one that I happen to have. Uh, these spicy stories can go for pretty big money. Uh, this is um, uh, Spicy Stories from May. Uh, I'm not sure what year, but. Um, these ones are interesting uh, because uh, they're not square bound books. Uh, they're almost like a magazine format. And um, the other thing that's cool about this particular issue is it's an infinity cover. You can see right down there. It's an infinity cover and that's why I bought it. These ones were a bit more spicy. <laughs> they lived up to the name. You know, sometimes had nudity and um, a little bit more adult stories in them. 
but that's part of the appeal of those books. Uh, the spicy mystery, spicy detective. Um, uh, I'm just trying to remember some other spicy ones. Spicy romantic adventures is another title. So those ones are more focused on adults and usually contained either sort of erotic stories or stories that um, contain nudity in sort of the images that they put in. So uh, just something to look for. Those those ones generally they go for a few hundred dollars up. You know they can be fairly pricey books, um, but there's a pretty good return on investment with them because there are many collectors that seek those kind of more spicy books. <laughs> um, and they came out during the mid 30s and went all the way through the golden age, early golden age, I should say. Okay. Um, Next is another series that's kind of interesting, which is um, Marvel Science Stories. I don't have any from uh, Marvel Science Stories, but it's um, it's a, definitely a good one to get. Um, you know, it's it's kind of early Marvel. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so it's you know Marvel Science Stories. It's just an interesting title. Uh, another title that would be good is Amazing Stories. Um, Amazing Stories is actually a fairly long-running pulp. Um, it ran from the early 20s <laughs> all the way up. Um, and if you get the August of 1928 issue, it has the first appearance of Buck Rogers. So kind of a cool, cool thing there. Uh, and he's on the cover as well, I believe. Um, and then another series is Dime Mystery, like, like 10 cents, Dime, Dime Mystery. Um, another series that had really great covers, more horror-based covers, and Dime Mystery number four actually has what looks like an homage to uh, Chamber of Chills number 19, but it's the other way around. Chamber of Chills 19 actually uh, is a kind of a, was inspired by Dime Mystery number four. Basically Dime Mystery number four, there's a guy he's holding like a crystal ball and it, he's looking at a woman behind it and you can see in the crystal ball a skull and you can see her regular face behind so it's the same kind of idea of chamber of chills 19 where you can see her holding the wine glass next to her face and in the wine glass you can see kind of the skull um so that one kind of commands a bit more money and if you can find it it's a it's a pretty pretty valuable book um another uh one that i kind of recommend uh, is Thrilling Wonder Stories. Uh, they have very sci-fi kind of based uh, covers. And what you want to do is when you buy these kind of books, you can buy them like they they can really range in value uh, and, and, and price. I, I, when I, I should say price more than value. The value is probably higher than the price sometimes because what happens is you'll find that people will sell their pulps without really understanding pulps in general especially a lot of comic um, collectors won't really understand pulps. It's the strangest thing, but I, I've seen pulps range from, and, and condition almost being the same, from $5 <laughs> all the way up to $1,200 for the same book. And, um, you know, you can tell one is like an, a sophisticated collector of pulps, and <laughs> one is like a guy that doesn't know what, like what he has and we'll just sell it really cheaply so that's one of the opportunities with pulps uh that um people will uh not know what they have and they will sell it really cheap just thinking oh it's an old book nobody's going to want that uh you know, it's like usually pulps kind of are really poor quality paper and it's just they kind of feel very dirty and kind of falling apart so a lot of people don't really like pulps um but some of the covers on pulps were pretty great. Uh, so with the thrilling wonder stories, what you want to look for is robot covers, uh, sci-fi, good girl covers uh, really sell well. So similar things that you would look for when collecting golden age comic books, like really great covers, something that's very exciting or, you know, has a bit of sexiness to it, uh, good girl usually does really well robot covers do well very sci-fi covers do well um skull covers is another big thing okay uh another another title that um 
I should recommend is Spider. It had a it was like a much earlier pulp and a very popular pulp. Um, and another one is Mystery Tales. And uh, actually, I brought some more spicy mystery <laughs> I wanted to show before. These are reprints, and I, I can show you some of the covers. So these would have been popular covers for the spicy mysteries. So I'm just going to show some of these quickly. So you can see what I'm talking about. Girl in the Red Dress, Bondage, Cool Bug cover. But these are cover swipes from the originals. You got... Again, this is things to look for. You got the girl kind of, as I said, these spicy mysteries were kind of that, these are these are reprints of the original pulps and you can see what they would have been like. You know, it's like a sexy girl on the cover, maybe some skeleton, guy about to stab her in behind, <laughs> you know, just, you know, just a whole bunch of things. And these reprint what they look like inside. So this is the kind of style you'd get, you know, scantily clad women, and you know a lot of text pulps were not like comics but the spicy pulps had a bit more images so they had a lot more images you but you'd get like these kind of pages as well where it's, there's just nothing it's just you know it's just text but a lot more kind of sexy imagery inside so ones to look for and those reprints you know are kind of nice because you can read those old pulps and they're a lot better quality <laughs> Um, another title that I'm kind of recommending is an interesting one. Um, if you're a Golden Age collector like I am, uh, you'll find that a lot of people will collect specific genres. One of the genres I collect is uh, sci-fi comics. And um, I really like Planet Comics. <laughs> it's just a really great title. It has kind of a mixture of good girl plus sci-fi, which is two of my favorite genres. Um, however, a lot of their covers were really cover swipes or similar to um, a pulp that they also ran, which was called Planet Stories. And here's an example of that. This is Planet Stories. So again, another pulp to kind of look for. And this is a color a cover reused as a cover. Actually, the, this is a cover swipe of the comic. It's the other way around. Uh, the comic came out first. Um, and the comic was uh, Planet Comics number 56. So just a really great uh, cover, by the way. So if you look at uh, um, Planet Comics 56, she's on a rocket ship instead of a horse. And later it got cover swiped again, or homaged, uh, in Planet Comics number one by Dave Stevens. So just a really great uh, pulp to look for. So that's, um, and I should give you the issue number for that one. It is Planet uh, Planet Stories, uh, Volume 4, from the summer of 1949, I believe. Something like that. Okay, so something to look for. <laughs> um, and those are, you know, that's, those are the questions about uh, pulps. And now, the last question. This one I'm, I'm actually debating. Should I answer this question? Because it's kind of a dangerous question. Because I'll, I'll read it to you and you'll see. Um, can you show your want list of Golden Age comics? Now, one of the things that collectors will do, and this is very true about collectors, is um, they won't talk about something until they've gotten it. And I've sort of shared a bit of my want list in the previous question, but... Um, I'm gonna like, so they want to know my top 10 kind of wants right now. And, but I'm gonna share it with you guys because some of these books, you know, if you guys can help me find them, um, that would be great. Uh, so I mentioned this book earlier, Chamber of Chills 19, the one with the famous uh, mug. Uh, actually, it's, it's on eBay right now as we're t I'm filming this. Um, but it's already in a, at a bid that's way beyond my price range. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Cinderella Love 25, which is a great Matt Baker cover. And then we got um, a Nightingale. It's just Nightingale. It's a one-shot. Uh, it was mentioned in Destruction Innocent. I don't have it. Um, then we got Giant Comics Editions number four. Somebody actually has it on eBay, but they... They want three times the last sale price, which is insane. Um, 
and yeah so I, I, I they they want too much for it <laughs> um, another one is sad sack number one I actually when I record this video um, yesterday um, it appeared on my comic shop and I you know I was doing something else and then I checked my email and then I got the notification that it was up for sale and by the time that I checked, it was already sold. It sold in less than an hour. <laughs> so sad sack number one is one that keeps on eluding me. Um, another one that I'm looking for is Tween Age Digest. It's just a, it's like almost like, it looks like almost like a Reader's Digest kind of level uh, book, but it is one that was also mentioned in Seduction Innocent and it's quite rare. Uh, then I'm looking for Tip Top Comics number 185, um, and it is the first cover appearance of the Peanuts. Uh, I mentioned Little Dot number 6 is another one I'm looking for, which is the first cover appearance of Richie Rich. Uh, another one that's really interesting is Speed Comics number 13, which is the first appearance of Pat Parker, the uh, the the war nurse really kind of an interesting character she starts out as a nurse going overseas just helping in the the war and then she becomes like a superhero <laughs> interesting character um another one that i'm looking for is uh weird mysteries number six and it's a uh, kind of like a you know the typical like magician has the hat he's pulling the rabbit out well in this case with weird mysteries uh six He's pulling out a decapitated head. And it's just a cool cover, one that I'm looking for. Um, and those are my some of my top um, my top ten kind of um, golden age wants. So that's that's it for this week. Uh, if you have a question you want to have answered, please put it in the comments below, and I will answer it next week. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.